did you ever hear it said that when someone's smart that they have horse sense or that an elephant never forgets or sly as a fox the list goes on hi i'm bruce blitz and welcome to cartooning with blitz and that's because animals have come to represent certain feelings and emotions and i think it's safe to say that everyone loves animals and as cartoonists we really love them because they're just great to draw now later on for our feature of the day we'll go to the florida aquarium and that's a great place to see wildlife and sea life up close and later on, we have our doodle trick portion, and I won't tell you what that is. I'll leave it as a surprise. So if you're ready, well, let's get started, and let's draw some cartoon animals. Now for our first subject, everyone's favorite, the koala bear. Now the koala bear is so cute. Everybody thinks they're cute, and they are. And they start with a couple circles. Now follow along is very easy. Put a big circle right there, and now some little half circles for the ears, and they're separated. You notice they're kind of far apart. All right, now for his nose, an oval, just like this. Now, to make him look cute, all the features are down low like that, the nose and the mouth, just like when you're drawing little people in cartoons, you want to make them look young, that's what you do. Now we're coloring this in, and leave that white space for the highlight or shine. Now, here's his mouth. He's got a cute little smile, which is nothing more than a U shape like that, with a puffy, cute cheek like that. Everything I say is gonna be cute, see that? Cute this, cute that. All right, now we're going to draw his cute eyes, and they're going to make, be sort of separated, not too far apart. It won't work. So right there, a little black dot, and a little black dot there, and an eyebrow here and an eyebrow there. Now, all we have to do is go over the shape that we started with and make it look like fur. They're cute little animals, and they're very soft to touch. Very interesting. They feel very, very, very soft, and... They sit in eucalyptus trees, and they're only seen, I'm going to make a little bit of shadow here like this, they're only seen and found in uh, Australia and New Zealand and zoos. Okay, now let's go in and we'll draw his body. Now that's another circle, a little bit more like an oval, and I'll show you how that's done. Now what you do is come around like that and add some detail. Now we'll put his arm in. Now his arm will be here and he'll be holding on to the tree, the eucalyptus tree that he's sitting in, and come back like that. Now all we have to do to that is make that look like fire as well. So his only job in life is to lay in the tree and look cute and eat leaves. And you know he does his job very well because he is cute. And over here and here we're going to make his chest. So we'll put some fur in there. And the same thing back here. Now, I won't go all the way down because I need to make his leg, which is a real cute, chubby little thigh. And he's hugging the tree. Here's his little claw down here. And we'll make that look furry as well. Now, the one back here, watch what I do to this. I'm going to make that look like it's seen in the back by making it look like it's in the shadow. So that differentiates that one from this leg. And over here, his other claw is holding on to the branch. And that's pretty much it for now. And let's put the uh, leaf, I mean the uh, tree branch in with some leaves on it. And just broken up line going right through the arms, hands, right through here. And continue on down. And here's the tree, the main part of it. And a knot hole. Look at that. All you have to do is make a couple swirlies, some detail on the tree, some lines going this way, this way, and here's some leaves. I don't know exactly what a eucalyptus leaf looks like, but we'll put that in like that. They also eat mistletoe. Just like at Christmas time, they eat mistletoe. I didn't know that, but they eat mistletoe and eucalyptus. Okay, now I'm going to use a little bit of gray for his body. And I'll lay the chalk on its side so I'll cover a lot of ground. And I'll leave a lot of white, just like that. And some around here. And let's see, some brown for the tree. And you know the eucalyptus leaves make him sleepy. So let's draw him looking sleepy. And you know what we'll do? We'll take the pen. Here's the eucalyptus leaves. We'll take our pen, and we'll do two lines for his eyes and make him look sleepy all at once. Now, see his expression now? 
Now watch this. A line there, and a line there, and uh, there he is. He looks kind of sleepy. I won't put Z's in there like, you know, a cartoon effect and accessory because he's not sleeping yet, but he looks like he's getting to be sleepy. All right, let's do another one. And this one's going to be a pig. A pig's a great one to draw, and it starts with a shape that looks a little bit like a jug laying down. And for the nose, I'm going to make a little oval and then come back. And that big shape. Now, once you've got that, we just put some detail on. Now, right here, we're going to put his ears on. Big, floppy ears. Look like giant leaves. And some detail inside. And then one coming up this way. Now we need to put his face in. So his eyes go here. A circle. Another one peeking out a little bit behind. And we'll have him looking at us. And now his nose looks a little bit like an electrical socket. So put two lines like that for his nostrils. And let's make him a real happy little guy. So put a wavy line coming up and a puffy cheek like that. Now, not much else to do except his little curly tail. That's very important. Now for his legs and his feet. Very small compared to the rest of the body. One there. And then back here. And this one here, which is a little bit in the distance, make it look darker. And then trail it off those lines and make it look like it's gradually getting lighter. And then it's casting a shadow. And let's put some funny hairs on them like this. And let's color this guy in. All right, let's start with a little light peach. Lay this chalk on the side and leave a lot of white space because I want it to look like it's shiny. And I'm going to go back in and use a little bit of red because I want it to come to life a little bit more. As I said, people really do love animals, and you can tell that simply by going to the zoo. Look how crowded it is. Later on, we'll go to the Florida Aquarium. A lot of people were there seeing all the animals up close. Now, we're going to blend this a little bit, and I'm going to use the greatest tool that an artist has, his finger. See how you can blend that? Or you can use a tissue. It's another great tool to use. And the sketch comes to life a little bit. Okay, I'll put a little bit of green. He's on the grass. All right, I like that. Let's do another one. This time we'll do a horse or a zebra. We can turn it into either one at that point. So... Follow along with me. This is very easy. We'll take it step by step. And it starts with a shape that looks a little like a sausage or a hot dog. Now watch. Come around. And I won't make this part here because we're going to need that shape to add something else. But you can see what we've done here. Now over here we'll put a couple lines coming up. And that's going to be his neck. Now we're going to put a real silly shape for his face. A guitar shape or that could be a peanut. And we'll make him a real silly looking horse or zebra. Now for his legs, coming out this way, have him running. And here's his legs, and put a big old hoof. And another one coming out from the other side, and he'll be running. And here's his other hoof. So we've got two hoofs. It'll be hoof you to listen to this. How's that? And another one up here. And another one back here in the same position as the other one. Now actually... Horses, or most animals, don't run like this or walk like that. Humans do, have one this way and one that way. But this is a cartoon world, and you want to make it look a little funnier. Now, back here, we'll put a little bit of black for the ground line. Now, we'll add some detail to the rest of it. First, his tail. Be a graceful curve like that. And there it is. Put some hair here. When you're drawing hair, you don't want to draw each strand. You want to draw where it begins and where it ends, and that's it. Okay, now over here, we'll do his face. Now, we'll make them silly looking, give them two big golf ball type eyes. And this one is a little bit behind that one. You don't see the whole thing. And let's give him his eyes. Peeking at us. His eyebrows up. He's a happy guy. And some silly hairs coming out like that. And now for his ears. Well, we'll have his ears. One flopping there. And the other one flopping this way. Some more hairs up there. Now for his nostrils. 
big oval shape like that that we fill in, and then over here, peeking out from the other side, and then the line around the nostril. Okay, now for his teeth. Well, we'll give him big, silly horse teeth, buck teeth like that, and let's define the shape that we started with a little bit and put a mane in. The mane is the hair down the neck. Now he's running, so we'll have it flying backwards. And here we'll do this. Now let's define that shape as well. All right, put a big smile. Now at this point, he could be a horse, or we could turn him into a zebra. He could be a, any kind of horse. He could be a Mustang, running to spend time with his friends, because he's a Mustang, and he must hang somewhere. Or we could turn him into a zebra, and that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to switch to a bigger marker, bigger point, because I'm going to put the stripes in. So going along with the shape that we started with, which is curved, we'll put these curved stripes in there. Remember, you want to go along with the shape and go right up the neck like that. And uh, zebras always look like they need a shave, so we'll put some black lines up here. The fronts of their faces are very dark. And their ears, well, they were dark too, and maybe the tail is as well. And did you ever hear the joke? What's black, white, and red all over? Uh, could either be a newspaper or an embarrassed zebra, black, white, and red. Well, we won't make them red all over, but we will put a little red in for his cheeks. Yeah, I like that. Now let's put a little bit of brown for him. He's kicking up some dust while he runs. You know, animals are so important. I mean, look at all the sports teams. Every sports team is named after an animal. I mean, try to think of one that's not. Uh, the Patriots. But we've got the Marlins, we've got the Eagles, uh, the Seahawks. It goes on and on. Some green here for the ground line. And some blue. Now, what I'm going to do is put blue in right behind, like that, and make the character come to the foreground a little bit. See? See how that does that? Okay. Now we have time for one more, and I'm going to draw another silly type in the barnyard. And this is going to be a turkey. Now watch, we start with a giant circle. And another one over here. And a curved line for his head to connect to the body. You've got that, you've got a made in the shade. Now we'll put some eyes in, which is a circle like that, and another one, same way we did the horse. We'll have it a little bit peeking out. And here's the eyes, and the eyebrows, and a beak. Coming up to a big smile. Now they always have that piece of skin hanging down over their beak, so we'll do that. And we'll make this look like feathers. Same thing here. And now over here, We'll do the same to that giant shape. This was a pretty easy one to draw, really, because there's really not much to it. Now watch. Get your whole wrist into it. You can't go wrong. Big fluffy lines like that. And you've got the tail feathers. You've got the wings. And here's his feet. Now where it's hanging over, we'll put some black lines like that. And some big toes. And some lines. And you could add as much detail as you want, but... We're running out of time, and you take a look at that sketch, and I'll play a little turkey music. That's called Turkey in the Straw. It's an old song. Now stay tuned for the feature of the day. Now, for our feature of the day, we're here at the Florida Aquarium, and they've got all kinds of sea life. They've got sharks, they've got turtles, they've got jellyfish, uh, no peanut butter, uh, and all kinds of wildlife. So let's take a look inside. Now, let's do a quack sketch of a duck. I'm sorry, a quick sketch of a duck. And this is called the hooded merganza. And the hooded part refers to the white along the side of his head. And I'm told that that's to attract the female duck. And there was a female duck here a moment ago, uh, but she's gone. So I guess it didn't work. But anyway, it's a good subject to draw. So let's get started and let's do that now. So we'll start to draw the hooded 
merganza with a teardrop shape. Like that. And right here we'll draw a circle, and that'll be his eye. And we'll have him looking at us. So we fill it in with a little black circle with a white dot there. And his eyebrows up. And now for his beak. Well, it's got a small beak. And I was reading there that it's got a little bumpy there, like teeth. And that's how he breaks up his food. And breaking up is hard to do, so that's why he does that. Now we're going to go back over this teardrop shape and make it look like feathers. And we're going to leave that white space because that's where he gets his name, the hooded merganza. And that white spot there is supposed to be very attractive to the female ducks. So he got the head done. Now we make a shape like this, which is just a curvy shape. And we'll connect it to the body, which is another teardrop. And we'll have them swimming, so we won't draw the bottom part. And let's make it look like feathers back here and here. And we'll go back and forth with our marker and make this a little darker because he had all kinds of beautiful markings on him. And that takes care of him. Now, as I said when I was there, that uh, he, we didn't see any female ducks and... He was trying like crazy to attract one, but it didn't work. But this is cartoon world, folks. Let's give him a break. And let's draw a female duck right here. And we'll give her a smile. And we'll have her eye half closed like that. Big eyelashes. She's looking down because she's being very shy about this. And let's draw her body, which is a graceful neck. And let's have her swimming right next to him. And some feathers. And a big heart because they're in love. And he's looking at us and he's saying... It worked. And we'll put that in a thought balloon with some bubbles. Let you know that he's the one doing the thinking. Some more water, water over here. I think that came out great. Now let's go back to the Florida Aquarium. Now these are the Florida red-bellied turtles. And I understand that they sneak into alligator nests to lay their eggs. I don't know, maybe alligators make great babysitters or something, I don't know, but in a way it makes sense because who's crazy enough to take an egg from an alligator? But it's a great subject to draw, so let's go back to the studio and draw them. And to do this, we start with a curved line for his shell. Just like that. Now we'll go back and we make this one a little wavy because nothing's perfectly round. And we add some detail for his shell. He was a cool looking turtle, I'll tell you. He walked up, he walked back, he got together with his friends, he walked back. But you know, as turtles are known for, they're very slow. He took his time. Okay, now for his feet. And he had long claws. And his feet went up there, tucked underneath the shell. And, of course, he's called the red belly turtle, so let's give him his red belly right here, and we'll call her that in in a second. But it kind of comes down below the shell. And his back feet come out like this. And his other ones, which were peeking through the other side, well, just double that line a little bit. This one we'll have coming forward. How's that? Like he's taking a step. And let's put some shadow here, and we'll have him walking on a log, which is what he did. I can just break up a line and have a couple swirlies for detail of the log. And now for his head. His head did not go inside the shell. He's, he's out today, so we're going to draw that. And that's just a curvy line. And here's his little head peeking out. Happy guy. There he is. He's looking up. Let's give him his eye. Now, because they're sleepy type characters, let's cut his eye in half like that, where it's half closed. And he's looking at us. But he's happy, so we'll give him a smile and some lines, some dots to give it some texture, and got to put some color in here now because he is the red belly. Maybe he's been laying out in the sun too long. Maybe he should use a little sunscreen. I don't know. So there's the red belly, and here's some green for his shell, and his legs, and up here. Now that's a great character. Now let's go back and see what else we can find. Now, it's safe to say that everyone is fascinated with sharks, including myself. 
And here I am inside the shark tank. That's right, I'm inside the shark tank. I'm only kidding, I'm outside the shark tank. And they've got all kinds of sharks in there. They've got a gray shark, they've got a brown shark, uh, a leopard shark, and even something called a nurse shark. I guess that's in case someone gets sick. Now, a common misconception is that sharks attack people, and they only do that if they're provoked. So let's draw their cartoon, and let's do a good job so that they like us. We definitely want them to like us, so let's start with a big curved line that goes right up. In one shot, we're going to do the whole outline of the shark, right up to his mouth like that. And we're going to come back and double this, and then down. And let's give him those big teeth and a circle for his eye. Looking at us, a big black eye with a white space for a shine. Their eyes don't have a whole lot of life to them, but we'll give them some expression with some eyebrows. Of course, they don't have eyebrows, but this is Cartoon World. And we'll put his bottom fin in here, and of course, that famous top fin that sticks out of the water and scares everybody to death. And here's the back fin. And there you have it. Now we're going to put some color into this guy. And we'll use a gray color because I think it was a gray shark. And they had brown sharks and they had nurse sharks. And they even had a leopard shark there. Which, of course, had spots. And you see how I'm doing this? I'm bearing down on one side of the chalk so I get a nice gradated tone to it. It gradually gets lighter all by itself without a whole lot of work from my part. Now, at the bottom here, I'm going to put a little guy in here who's scared. Real quick fish who's swimming by with a wavy line for his mouth and an eye looking up nervously, even whistling. <laughs> he hopes the shark doesn't see him. Well, that's a great character. And we had a great time at the Florida Aquarium. And how about you? Maybe there's an aquarium or a zoo in your hometown. It's a great place to see animals up close and to draw them. Next up, cartoon doodle tricks. Now, in keeping with our show's animal theme today, let's do an animal doodle trick. And I got some friends to stop by, and we'll do a cartoon bird. Okay, and we start with two giant ovals. Right there, and right there. And a couple more ovals inside. And they'll be the eyes. And let's put some lines here, and here, and here, and his beak. Now I'm going to put a line down the side, on both sides, and some feathers for wings, and an ear here. Anybody know what kind of bird this is yet? Anybody? An owl. An owl, very good. That looks like an owl. Okay, now, got the picture of the owl, and if we take this picture, and we turn it upside down, and we add some more detail to it. Watch this. Put a circle right here. And some fluffy lines like this. And a curved line like this for a mouth. And I think you can see it happening right in front of you. And let's put a hat on him. A professor's hat. With a tassel coming down. We've gone from a wise old owl to wise old owl. Like that? <laughs> Okay, well, that's all the time we have for today, and I hope you've enjoyed it at home, and I hope you guys liked it. And for our Blitz tip, don't be afraid to take a chance. You know why? Because you never know what you can do until you try. Isn't that right? I'm Bruce Blitz saying thanks for being with me, and help me out, guys. Keep, Keep on, on cartooning. cartooning. That's right.